Welcome back guys. Christmas is just around the corner and uh, the fermenter has uh, just been freed up today. So it is time to get a little bit of turbo cider back on the go. Started facing at a photo they've taken. Space tree flying through the skies and battles happen everywhere. I was looking like a complete madman in uh, Lidl the other day, which uh, raised a few eyebrows as I was going through the checkout with 24 litres of uh, their apple juice, which is perfect for, uh, for this sort of stuff. What I'm going to be doing is splitting this down. So I'm going to be doing a 25 ish litre batch of just a straight ferment out turbo cider. I'm gonna pull four to five liters um, off, which I'm gonna keep cider as a still cider and uh, turn that into a nice spiced mould cider for over Christmas. And then the what's left in the uh, fermenter, I'm um, gonna drop some cherries in there for a bit of kind of secondary ferment, just to extract as much kind of flavor from those as possible and uh, get that caked up Carve it up, and uh, hopefully should have a uh, a nice uh, cherry uh, cherry cider for over uh, over Christmas and New Year. The one difference that I'm going to make, uh, or the one change rather that I'm going to make uh, this time compared to when I did the turbo apple and blackcurrant cider, is uh, I'm going to cut down the sugar a little bit. So that one turned about turned out about twelve percent, I think it was which, um, I mean, yeah, I, if you want the bottomizing, that's the perfect way to go. Um, so I'm still gonna drop a kilo of sugar in this time, um, but with the additional kind of volume and things like that, I, I, I rough guess, I'd imagine it would be coming out sort of around about sort of eight-ish, maybe a little bit more percent, uh, which I think would be uh, perfect for uh, for this sort of thing. So already got everything uh, kind of washed and cleaned up, just gotta get it uh, sanitized, and then uh, we can get on with grill. Just giving everything a real good kind of spray down. Trying to get a good coat with uh, the star sun. Star sun got to no rinse, so it makes it a lot easier. And doesn't leave any kind of off flavours or anything like that around anywhere. So it's a pretty cheap as well. That's our fermenter all sterilised and set up. And now, in with the 24 litres of apple juice. Now, obviously this stuff's uh, fine just to go straight in. You don't need to boil it or do anything, uh, anything like that. And this is the only stage in the process where you want to get as much kind of oxygen into it as possible just to uh, kind of help the yeast get off to the healthier start. So splashing it around is perfect. Obviously today I'm just using the uh, Lidlone brand apple juice, but you can basically use anything. Ideally, you want on the label from 100% juice from concentrate with just fruit on there. But as long as it hasn't got anything in there which ends in ice or aches, generally you're uh, pretty good to go. So we've got 24 litres of apple juice all in the fermenter. Just bear in mind that uh, each litre of uh, liquid weighs about a kilo. So if you are doing a big brew batch, you might want to uh, kind of put that where you're uh, planning on fermenting it out. 
And as always, um, I use the uh, cheap little stuff, um, but uh, basically you can use anything without uh, any preservatives in. The main thing you want to look for is just on the ingredients is ideally apple juice from concentrate, 100% fruit content. Um, if you can't get that, just make sure that there's uh, nothing that ends in ites or apes um, in there and generally you should be, should be fine. So I'm going to bob a kilo of sugar in. Um, I've got three English tea bags. Uh, just uh, I'll boil those up with probably about half a litre of, uh, of water so it doesn't dilute it down too much just to uh, extract some tannins out there. Then we've got some yeast nutrient and just a cheapo uh, Young's yeast to go in. I've also uh, bobbed the heater on, on the uh, grain father just to bring this up close to uh, around about 20 degrees so I can pitch that yeast as, as soon as possible and then it'll just be in with the uh, in with the tilt see what the gravity's doing and uh, yeah go from there really okay so we've got uh, about half a litre of uh, tea which has been uh, steeping for a good uh, five minutes or so so it's just straight in to uh, to the fermenter and then i'm just going to give it a, a bit of a mix up but so at the moment you don't need to worry about uh, oxygenation that's actually a good thing because it gives the yeast plenty to uh, kind of feed off apple juice is all in sugar's all in and the half litre of tea just for the uh, tannin elements all in so i'm just going to sterilize the uh, tilt that's all ticking through on the uh, on the phone at the moment uh, drop that in and uh, see where we are on the uh, original gravity or the starting gravity The starting gravity is coming in pretty much bang on. We're at uh, 1.058 at the moment, so if it fully ferments out, going to be uh, knocking around about the 7.5 7.6% mark, which will be uh, perfect for uh, what, I'm, uh, what I'm intending for. Um, only thing left to do now is uh, it's pretty much at uh, temperature, so I've just got some Young's yeast nutrient, so I'm just going to drop a couple of um, tablespoons of that in and young super wine yeast compound. Um, this has already got yeast nutrient in, but I've got uh, some of the uh, nutrient knocking around spare that I want to get used up. Um, so drop a couple of teaspoons of this in, give it a quick uh, stir, save it up, and uh, then hopefully in the next week or two should be uh, ready for the, uh, for the next bit. <laughs> It's been about two weeks since we uh, since we got the brew on. Fermentation finished uh, a few days ago and came in at 0.999. So all in looking at uh, around about a 7.75% uh, brew right there. Um, I've got one and a half kilos of uh, cherries to uh, go in just as a uh, secondary um, ferment. And what I'm gonna do before that is uh, draw a damage on of um, cider off. So that's probably gonna be around about sort of four and a half-ish um, liters. And I'm gonna use that for some mulled wine, uh, mulled wine, mulled cider over, uh, over Christmas. And uh, the rest, I'm gonna bob the cherries in, let that um, fire up again, just uh, ramp the temperature up a little bit, just to give that a uh, little bit of a head start. And uh, yeah, go from there. As always, everything's been thoroughly cleaned and uh, sanitised. Just to make sure we don't get no beasties in, especially at, uh, especially at this stage. I'm just going to run the uh, piping right to the bottom of there, just to try and minimise any splashing. What you want to be doing on this is just minimising the kind of headspace that you've got at the uh, at the top as well. That's our demi John of turbo cider all wrapped off. That's going to be uh, used for the mulled wine. It's uh, looking pretty beautiful at the moment. It's uh, a little bit like a uh, Nipah hazy um, type colour, which I absolutely love. Um, I'm going to put this somewhere uh, warm for the next uh, sort of week or two, uh, just to let that uh, kind of clear up. It may need, um, well, it will need uh, kind of racking in between uh, in between as well. Um, but the yeast will just kind of clear up after themselves and, uh, and just kind of sort, them, uh, sort themselves out, really. I've got to say, how a cheeky little taste on this. It smells very boozy with it being so young. It's actually like a really nice tartness to um, 
to the apple on that. So I think that will work really, really well. Um, there's not too much booze in it. It's just uh, kind of a nice level, but once that's spiced up, I think that'll make a uh, pretty special mould uh, mold cider, actually. Mm. Anyway, less of the drinking, more of the uh, cherrying. This is the cheeky little cherry edition. These have just been defrosting since last night. Just going to uh, basically bob them in the fermenter, sterilise everything up again, and uh, get that closed up to work its magic for the next week. Oh, that's sour. Oh. Got the cherries all in and uh, the fermenter's uh, set at 21 degrees at the moment so I'm going to leave it like that for a couple of days and then just do the usual ramping it up by uh, a degree a day and then hopefully in about a week's time we should uh, all be good to get that uh, kegged and carved up all being well so see you soon. As always I'm massively behind on where I needed to be so the cherries were put in about two weeks ago. I was hoping to uh, get uh, the booze kegged and uh, carved up. So that's just uh, had a, about a week or so just to uh, kind of tick over. That hopefully hasn't happened. So I'm gonna be uh, having a crack at uh, forced carving out. I'm gonna get it uh, racked into the uh, keg tonight. Um, pressure that up to uh, about 45 um, PSI. And leave that for 24 hours and then drop it down to serving pressure and hopefully that uh, will actually um, kind of do its uh, do its magic. So that's going to be ready in the next couple of days, but we will see. Um, the This is actually the cider um, before I put the uh, cherries in that I racked off, because I'm going to be making some mulled cider with that tomorrow. Um, I was hoping to uh, get it racked off the leaves at the uh, bottom before now, but not had uh, not a chance. Um, not the end of the world. It's only been in there uh, what, a couple of weeks or so. Um, so I'm leaving it in uh, here, which will uh, drop down to uh, probably around about five, six uh, tonight. So that'll be uh, nice and chilly just to um, take some more of the rubbish out of uh, suspension. I'm also gonna be doing a roast ham that I'm gonna cook in uh, some of the cherry uh, cherry cider that I've made before I carve that up. And uh, just do like a brown sugar glaze on that, which hopefully might turn out quite, uh, quite nice. So, um, Firstly, you're going to chuck a couple of litres of the uh, cherry cider um, into uh, into the grower, and then the rest of it is going to go into the uh, keg and get uh, carved up. Hopefully, all will come good. If not, we've got plenty of other booze anyway. So, yeah, let's crack on. Everything's been cleaned and sanitised, and just going to run the tubing right to the bottom. of the growler and then just let that slowly feed in. Again, that's all been uh, cleaned and sanitised. Just going to run the uh, tube in right to the bottom in there. And then just set that flowing again. And that is what our not so delicious cherries are looking like a couple of weeks in. I said it's been all caked and uh, in the cake rater, hopefully carving, uh, carving up pretty well. Um, but yeah, time to get uh, cleaned up and uh, have a nice cold one. Did the false carving yesterday and this is the moment of truth when we find out whether it actually worked or not. So let's see. So I'm 
going to say it wasn't a great success. Um, Yeah, so it's a little bit overcarved actually. So uh, <clears throat> looks like we're going to do some fresh releases on it, just try and get the uh, carbonation down over the next uh, couple of days. Um, still pretty drinkable though, a like, little bit, a uh, little bit tart, but the uh, apple and cherry flavours very much, uh, very much kind of there in the background. Um, if we can get the carbonation down, that'll be uh, that'll be pretty cool. But either way, still booze.